Have you ever wondered the hidden meanings behind symbols? Symbols that have passed over time and cultures. We are talking about the swastika. Do you think you know all about it? Think again. Brace yourself as we dive deep into the cosmic origins and profound significance of this ancient crest. Our story takes us back 5,000 years in the Indus Valley. The thriving Sindhu Sarasvati civilization, which extended from modern day northeast Afghanistan to Pakistan and northwest India, but was a part of India before its partition. Amidst the bustling streets and vibrant bazaars, the swastika began its remarkable journey. Look closely, and you'll witness a mesmerizing sight a symbol of forearms emerging from a center, swirling in a particular direction, like a majestic rotating disc. While the scholars of India trace the genesis of the swastika back to the Vedas, the ancient scripture of wisdom, they speak of Shanta, the Swasi mantra, resonating through the ages. I am definitely not going to be saying this correctly, but look. Om Swatsi na Idru, Vrudrajvra Swatsi nu Pusha, Vishvavadraha. Swastina Starksio, Arshintamiya, Swatsino. These ancient verses paint a cosmic picture. They speak of redemption, of Indra and Pusha, as celestial entities bestowing their blessing upon us. And within these verses lies their representation of Swatsika a figure that captures the essence of auspiciousness. Talk about the universe, a mesmerizing dance of rotation and revolution. Stars, planets, and galaxies all spin, rotate around themselves, and revolve around their celestial centers. It is this magnificent principle that finds its reflection in the swirling arms of the Swatsika. Picture our majestic Milky Way, the Mandakini. As the ancient Indians called it, its form, a celestial spiral with four radiant arms, emerges amid her image of the swastika. Astonishingly, modern science confirms what the ancient Indians knew all along, a spiral galaxy swirling through space, symbolizing the very essence of the swastika. Now the question is, why is this auspicious symbol so cherished and widely embraced? Hindus, in their pursuit of spiritual enlightenment, honor the swastika during puja rites and rituals. They use dry or wet kumkum to imprint this sacred symbol on new articles, appliances, vehicles, and even at the entrance of new homes and business premises. But why, you may wonder. Beneath the surface lies a heartfelt sentiment. A desire for these objects to not only serve their ordinary purpose, but also assist the individuals on their spiritual path towards moksha which is the ultimate liberation. Whether it's a computer or a car, every article becomes a catalyst for progress on the journey to enlightenment. Impressive thought, isn't it? The symbol encompasses profound meanings beyond material possessions also. It is a symbol of Mangalia, signifying auspiciousness, peace, harmony, and success in all endeavors undertaken in life. It serves as a powerful tool to ward off evil and invite good fortune into one's life. Just like a protective shield, the swastika stands tall, safeguarding those who embrace its sacredness. It finds its place not only in religious ceremonies, but also in the very fabric of Indian homes. Imprinted on doorways and ingrained in the floor of temples, it radiates an aura of positivity, welcoming all who enter with open arms. The symbol holds a dear significance. It represents the sacredness of Omkar, which is the prehistoric sound that resonates through the universe. It is as if it carries the essence of divine vibrations, reminding us of the eternal cosmic rhythm that binds a soul. Within its elegant forearms lie a multitude of meanings. It symbolizes Surya, the radiant sun, the wheel of life, just as Vishnu, god in Hindu mythology, safeguards the four directions. The swastika with its four arms acts as a shield against negative forces, guiding us towards a path of peace and enlightenment. Ultimately, it becomes the embodiment of Sant and Dharma, which is the eternal and universal sentiment of peace and moksha for all mankind. But how do other cultures adore this symbol? The swastika revealed itself to the world in fragments of Greek pottery. 
discovered by the intrepid explorer Flinders Petri in the ancient city of Nacritus, Egypt. Those pottery fragments whispered secrets from the 12th dynasty. Their swastika reaching back in a time to a mesmerizing era around 3000 BCE. But the story didn't end here. No, it traveled even further back, delving into the mists of Paltheonic era, where a painted swastika appeared in a mysterious case, dating back to a staggering 10,000 years. It was a symbol of the ages, etching its mark on early Christian tombs and gracing the walls of Jewish temples in Palestine, each bearing witness to its enigmatic power. These old relics whispered a greater narrative. Its omnipresence throughout the ancient world spoke of migration, of people carrying the symbol with them as they ventured far and wide. It tempted scholars to ponder the possibility that it originated from India, its spiritual significance transcending borders and cultures. In 1896, Thomas Wilson, an explorer of knowledge, weaved a hypothesis that the swastika's migration suggested an intimate connection between ancient civilization. He marveled at the idea that the symbol of religion traveled across vast oceans, carried by human hands that bridged distant lands. It is not equally strong evidence of contact, he pondered, to find same signs used in both of the countries as a charm, with the same significance in both countries. It became a tangible piece of evidence in the tapestry of human migration, a silent witness to the interconnectedness of our ancestors. As new discoveries emerged, the swastika gained more importance, suggesting that people migrated out of Barad instead of invaders coming in. In a book called Hidden Horizons, revealing 10,000 years of Indian culture, various pieces of evidence came together to support this idea. The Human Genome Project, Clues from Nature History, and satellite images of the ore channels of the Vedic Saraswati River all combined to show how ancient civilizations were connected. In the realm of spirituality, the swastika revealed its divine dance. It adorned the lotus feet of Parabaman Purushuddham Narayan, the supreme reality, manifesting in countless forms. Brahma, in the enchanting verses of the Padma Purana, unveiled the sacred signs that grace the supreme god's lotus feet and among them, the swastika shimmered like a celestial jewel. In his Vishnafetushini commentary on the Srimad Bhagavatam, expounded on the significance of these signs, he spoke of the divine avatar and how the numbers of swastikas found on their souls hinted at their greatness. Two, four, five. The more swastikas, the grander the avatar, a cosmic equation beyond our mortal comprehension. In the Western realm, where the swastika was once hailed as a messenger of good fortune, its reputation was ruthlessly tarnished by the Nazis. Darkness loomed as the rise of the Nazis twisted the swastika's meaning. German scholars imagined a connection between Sanskrit and their language. Construct a tale of two white warriors called Aryans linking Indians and Germans. The twisted minds of anti-Semitic nationalists seized upon this tale appropriating the swastika to further their sinister agenda. They perverted its beauty, transforming it into a symbol of hate. A flag of the abhorrent Third Reich, the once radiant swastika became an embodiment of all the atrocities and horror committed under the Nazis. For the Jewish people, the swastika became a chilling symbol of fear, suppression, and extermination. It etched itself in the collective memory of a generation, a haunting reminder of the darkest chapter in human history. Freddie Noller, a 93-year-old Holocaust survivor, speaks with a voice trembling with pain and determination. Germany, scarred by its association with swastika, banned a symbol at the end of the war, attempting to sever the ties that bound them to their agonizing past. In 2007, a desperate plea echoed across European Union, urging for the continent-wide ban on the swastika, but the symbol, like a specter of shame, refused to be silenced completely. But long before the Nazis became known, explorers from the West traveled to distant land and were fascinated by the positive symbol of swastika. <laughs> These adventurers ventured to Asia and were captivated by the swastika's long and positive history. When they returned home, they brought back their fascination and wanted to incorporate the charm of this ancient symbol into their own culture.
As a result, in the early 20th century, the swastika started gaining popularity and appeared in Western architecture, advertisements and product designs. Oh, how the swastika flourished! Coca-Cola bubbled with excitement, imprinting its bottles with the symbol of prosperity. Carlsberg raised its frosty mugs, embracing the swastika as a guardian of good luck. Even the Boy Scouts donned its crest, proudly displaying their affiliation with this cosmic talisman. The Girls Club of America took a bold step, Christianizing their magazine Swastika, showering their young readers with the badge of triumph. Will the ancient sign ever break free from its negative associations? Can the Swastika regain its positive cosmic significance? Surpass the lasting damage caused by the Nazis? Only time can reveal the answer.